but yeah. Cool. It was a nice looking keyboard. Um, I like how all the... Low yeah, no, I, I, I figured it was low poly, but it's like nice low poly. Um, I see you have, like, you put little divots in all the keyboards, or on all the, the keys, um, and that looks nice. Um, this is like really strange lighting. The keyboard almost just, like, gets absorbed into the background here. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's what I figured. It's fine. I think it's kind of cool, actually. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, I think this, like, totally holds up. Um, it seemed like that nice sort of hybrid, I guess, between very high detail, low poly, and I guess just it's, it's a good hybrid between, like, hardcore animation model, but, like, still keeping it low poly. Because you have all the detail where it's like you've carved out beneath all the keys, um, which is something you'd expect from, you know, an animation model, but, like, it's still low poly. It definitely holds up as low poly, too. Um, you have like the nice little bevels on the corners and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> yeah, cool. Um, so did you have any issues making this, or like, not so much? Yeah. I would 100% recommend making a separate object <laughs> for set emissive thing. Um, as a general rule, it's like not a great idea to use um, to have multiple textures assigned to one material. So like, you know, texture on a per face basis. Um, I, mean, I, I totally do it like on occasion, um, and in this case, like it might not be the worst thing ever. Uh, it's just a lot less prone to to issue if you have. A separate object, because that way, if you for some reason need to in Unity, like you know, assign it a new material, I'm not sure if you have the ability to assign materials to a single face in Unity. Um, so yeah, so because you have that separate object, it ensures that you have complete control over your textures and like exactly what's happening with them. Yeah. It should do. Okay. In Maya, it will. And honestly, I don't know why that wouldn't be a thing in Unity. Um, you but yeah. Be yeah, you should. You should be able to. Um, it actually occurred to me, like as I was as I was saying things, I was like, oh, you could totally, if you wanted to, not add an extra plane and just make a map for emissiveness. Um, so basically, you would just have, you know, throw like your little gradient on the side of your texture, kind of thing. Um, texture the rest of the keyboard over here, and then just make a map so that your keys and the base of the keyboard are not emitting light, but this like little back area with the gradient is. Um, so you could also set it up like that. It just kind of depends on your preference. Um, that may or may not, it would save you a texture, which like would be, I guess, slightly more efficient. I don't know if it would be noticeably more efficient. Um, did that answer your question? Cool. Um, any other questions or like thoughts, comments from the peanut gallery? Cool. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, it's a nice looking little keyboard. Um, anyone else want to look at their assignments from this week? Cool. Uh, what's your name? Sorry. Chase. Ch Chase. Sorry. I am horrible with names. I also like literally kind of can't see anyone's faces if I'm not wearing my glasses. Um, all right, where am I going? CL. It's super weird. I can also, I can pin names with last names and initials, just not the names to the faces. It's very strange. Um, nice. All right, cool. Um, so are there any um, like thoughts, questions, issues you had, or just kind of want feedback? Um, Oh, oh, sorry, Racks. Um, yeah, so let me take a look, I guess, at your Maya file. Um, so implement them as in make them, or like implement make them as in? And also make them look like. They're sitting in the fridge rather than just sort of floating? Yeah. OK. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would recommend, um, usually it seems like in fridges. That's so cute. All right, I'm just going to hide that because I don't want to deal with it. 
Um, I mean, honestly, I'd probably just call this a day for like how it's constructed. Um, it does maybe seem a little bit odd that the, and again, if you have reference to back this up, ignore me. Um, but to me, it seems a little weird how the prongs are like coming out of the front yeah, of this I grade. Actually, I actually based that off my old workplace. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you have, if I ever give you crap for anything and you have reference to back it up, send it to me and I will totally bite my tongue. Yeah, and another thing is uh, when the racks kind of overlap each other, there's uh, like uh, kind of like glue coming off like around the area where they're attached. Yeah. Just a lot of tedious modeling. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought about it getting it. I was like, that seems like hell. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that's c kind of stems from uh, when it's made. It's basically just strips of wire that are welded together. So that's like that. Yeah. The curve, and then they powder coat the whole thing, so it ends up looking smooth and white. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, unless you're like pushing real close into that fridge, I wouldn't probably wouldn't deal with that because honestly I don't know it just it just seems unnecessarily tedious to an extent like that just doing that would take so long that it seems like it would actually take away from other things um, in terms of how things anchor into the fridge I'm used to so your fridge looks more like a fancy wine cooler I guess or like one of those wine fridges yeah it's, it's, it's meant to be more like that okay so yeah I can see the little yeah yeah, so usually there will be some kind of little channel. Sometimes it doesn't look like this fridge does it so much, but um, sometimes they'll have that was simple as you can get. That's like a really cute little mini fridge. Okay. Holy crap. Um, sorry. Um, but sometimes they'll have like little bumps or whatever where you have to sort of, like as you're pulling the shelf out, you have to like bend it upwards to get it out yeah. kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, we'll just add little nubs that the racks can sit on. Um, and that is probably honestly how I would handle that. Um, um, another thing I was wondering, yeah. uh, the topography of the second part of the fridge is a little weird. This area? Yeah. There are some end guns in here. Um, <laughs> probably something to do with. It had to do with the bevel. The bevel kind of messed it up. And the fridge oh, that's actually not the most recent profile. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, wait, did I grab the wrong one by chance? Cause uh, I no, I think okay. I just didn't. Gotcha. I don't think I saved it. Fair. Um, it was that, it was that weird. <laughs> um, no, I did that too. Um, but it does look like, so if you end up going back and like working on this file or whatever, um, there are some floating verts here, just like in, that aren't attached to anything. Um, and this is the kind of thing where like if you go to insert an edge loop tool, it's going to stop here because technically that's an end gone. Um, so you just go through and like mark you select, I would just do your whole model honestly, um, <coughs> and just hit delete, and it's going to get rid of all of those, um, at which point you should be able to go through and see like, not entirely, like, this thing's kind of weird, it's like chill in there, so it's yeah. like get rid of that. Um, and then you should have at that point a nice clean edge where you can just go back in and add in one more loop and not worry about like end gons or stuff stopping weird, but it looks like that actually at least on this part, like pretty much fixed all of the issues that you had. Um, where, I mean, like now it, it looks like it would behave very reasonably for, for continuing working on it. Um, any other stuff? Uh, no, pretty good. Cool. Um, is this supposed to be low or high poly? High poly. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. Because I'm like, you went out of your way to like smooth this bevel in here, and I'm like, oh god, like smoothing, yeah. smoothing bevels is the worst. <laughs> um, in case no one's ever done it before, it sucks. Um, but no, I mean, you definitely did it well, and you managed to keep the edge flow like very reasonable in here. Um, Probably just delete some of the extraneous to edge edges. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, like all these guys in here, you could probably just get rid of them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, honestly, I wouldn't super worry about that? You could totally go through, I don't know, it would make UVing maybe a little easier, might save some time, but yeah. <coughs> um, I think look though, like this totally looks cool. I like. I do like whatever you did with the lighting in your in your renders, like that's cool looking. Yeah, uh, warm, uh, a warm area light. Yep. Cool. Yeah, uh, but no, I mean that, 
it does make a really neat effect. Like if you lit it like this in your your final scene. That's pretty. Yeah, that's probably not gonna work. It, it's gonna look especially good. Yeah. In like the nighttime scene. Yeah. No, that's gonna look super sweet. Like that's really gonna draw your eye to that and look really really great. Um, so that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I think overall it's pretty good. Um, did you have any other questions or issues with that or? No. Cool. Um, all right, neat. Anyone else want to volunteer their projects as tribute? Cool. Uh, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> One day I will learn people's names properly. Um, all right. All right, cool. All right, so did you have any um, specific questions or like just kind of wanted feedback on uh, yeah. Yes. What is this object? Oh my god, this is amazing. Sorry. That's me. Oh, wait. Sorry. Uh, Cool. I'm so sorry, Mike. No. <laughs> I'll get I'll get to all of you, that's fine. Yeah. For the barbed wire, I will totally not make you smooth that because that would be evil on so many levels. Um, although I will say it doesn't smooth too badly. Um, it does seem like this is actually really dense for barbed wire, which I guess your reference was like pretty dense, so it I guess makes sense. But like usually for barbed wire, it seems like it's it's the barbs are usually not like separate extrusions out of the wire. It'll be like the wire wrapped around itself with, and like the, the cut ends are what makes the spike. Um, so I mean, strictly speaking, like, and you can see that kind of here too. Um, so I think if I were to do this, I'd probably, not that this is particularly less labor intensive, um, but I'd probably go in and just like wrap the wire with NURBS curves, <laughs> like 10 or 15 NURBS curves and just sort of like tie them together in a bunch and then just terminate them and make the ends spiky. Um, that being said, I mean, like, I th like what you have here um, definitely holds up from, <laughs> from far away. It looks spiky and dangerous. Um, if you get up close to it, though, it, like, it kind of breaks down and like doesn't so much have. It looks more like a thorny branch yeah. uh, than it does barbed wire. Um, so I think I'm not gonna lie. I'm not entirely sure if there is a better way to make this shape uh, rather than just like selecting edges. There has to be a way to automate this. I just don't know what it is. Um, Right. That. I don't know. I, that is a totally a thing I'm gonna look up later because that sounds awesome. Um, if I found anything, I'll send. I'll let you guys know. But um, that seems like the kind of thing where it might break down a little bit when the object is like so curved. Yeah. Um, but again, I can't really comment because I've never actually heard of that before. So, yeah. But um. Yeah, one thing you can do, not that this makes it like any more or less easy to do things, but uh, if you're ever selecting a large number of stuff like this, and just to be safe, you could create a quick select select, quick select set for it. Um, so in case you deselect something, or if you ever need to go back and reselect it, um, it's really easy to do that. So you can just grab, you know, same thing, I demoed it for like that weird strawberry that I did a while ago, but like just grab any of these faces, um, go to create, sets, quick select set, name it, whatever. Um, and then at any point, like after you've gone back and like, you know, done whatever, clicked on other things, modified the model, um, if you go to select uh, quick select sets and just grab your set, it'll, you can see it's reselected all those faces. Um, so sometimes it is nice to do that, just like, just in case your selection crashes or something weird, or like, because reselecting that is awful. Um, not that's inherently related to your question, but yeah. So I mean, if you want to leave it like this, um, I say you totally welcome to leave this low poly. I think this is like high poly enough where it like doesn't look weird uh, when it's left low poly, um, but it also honestly like doesn't smooth too badly. Um, it just takes a while to smooth, but yeah. 
if you want to, strictly speaking, if you want to make it more realistic, I'd recommend just going back and just kind of like wrapping it with NURBS curves. Um, the other thing you could consider doing instead of wrapping 50 NURBS curves is to just sort of tie a few little NURBS curves knots, put them just around your, your bat, and then just extrude the ends out and sort of connect them into each other so you're not manually making 70 different knots on this. Um, but I do, I do like this object. It's satisfyingly aggressive looking. <laughs> Very weird. Um, did you have any other questions? Like, did that kind of help, sort of? Cool. Um, good stuff. All right. And clearly, I was like thinking I knew your initials. What are your initials? MDG. Oh, OK. Wait. What did I just? Uh, whoops. I am just in dingus, and I don't recognize any of the letters. Not bad. Um, Um, all right, sorry, did you have any specific questions about this or just? Uh, yes. Okay. Nice. So on the clock, yes. the, the frame of the window on it, mm -hmm. um, I made that just with like, I used a plane and I used a multi cut to kill like, all the shape yeah. and then extrude it. Mm -hmm. But it has like really horrendous edge flow. And I was wondering <laughs> if there's like an easier or a different way to make that to have better edge flow. Because it's really bad. <laughs> Um, all right, and of course, because I'm an idiot. Um, all right, so yeah, there is probably another way to make that edge flow. So let me, cool. I like your bookcase, by the way. Like the, the molding stuff in the front looks pretty sweet. Um, so like this area? Oh, this. Oh, yes, I see. Um, yeah, so that's probably a thing where I would like start with plane. Um, and then just sort of keep, uh, keep doing stuff. So if I like duplicate this, a little bit the same thing where I was like tracing the swords last week. Um, so I'm just going to uh, set this to a reference layer. And uh, also like I don't envy you having to smooth this. Just yeah. But anyway, um, uh, I'm going to turn on uh, interactive creation because I like interactive creation. Um, so if you just go in to like one of your side views like this, um, you can pretty much just draw a plane on. Um, so in this case, I might just sort of start here, uh, shift that forward so I can actually see it. Um, this would be kind of weird because I'm, be, I'm just gonna work gray on gray because I don't feel like not doing that. Um, but you could just kind of go through and like, you know, just extrude, extrude the loops down and then, you know, scale them or shift them around as necessary to get the shape. Um, and what you can do is start with a few different planes. So like if you, like at this point, um, you know, I've hit this intersection here. Um, so I might just sort of fiddle this vertice a little bit, um, grab this, extrude it out. Uh, and then I can take this here and bring that down and just sort of grab this and like keep going. <laughs> okay. um, so that's like honestly usually how I handle weird stuff like this. Um, I, I totally had to do something similar when I was in CGI 1 and I was like, I tried to make it like a 3D model first, and it was like a whole tear of horribleness. Um, and I will never do that again. But, um, but yeah. So then, depending on also like, I assume this—it doesn't look like this is supposed to be beveled. I like your chain in here. Um, <laughs> just like notice random things as I'm doing stuff. Um, but again, like depending on the shape you need, um, if this is supposed to have some kind of like bevel or spike in the pyramid shaped in the front if it's not just like a flat grate. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how you set up your topology, you can also sort of go in and uh, not extrude it. Um, uh, just like insert an edge loop in uh, like this and like that and then just sort of grab those and pull them straight out okay. and you know that would allow a little more detail if you wanted it or if you needed it. Um, but again, that's kind of the benefit of setting up the geometry like this where you have like nice rows of quads running down stuff. Okay. Um, for this little area up here, I'd probably just like throw like one, like, you know, a plane in that traces like just this rectangular area and then just extrude this giant bubble thing out of that. Um, but yeah, that should get you something pretty reasonable to work with. 
I'm actually, I'm like honestly pretty impressed you were able to multi-cut that out. It just seems like a very tedious, tedious thing to do. Um, it's not hard to get that, it's just that it was really bad. Yeah, multi-cut doesn't do great stuff to your edge flow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, honestly, like for this particular shape, you could probably just leave it as is. Um, since it's flat, the fact that the edge flow is like really weird isn't really going to affect all that much. Okay. Um, if you cared or were ever using this as a portfolio piece where you're like showing off the wireframe of this, you might want to redo it. Yeah. Um, but just as is now, like that edge flow is not causing any noticeable issues okay. with the stuff. Thanks. Yeah. Um, did you have any other questions? Uh, you know, cool. I like the molding. It's a nice looking glass. It's fun. I like all the. Is it, what, are, what are these things? On the inside, like not. I feel it. I don't they look like. No, but like looking at my reference picture, I think they're like bells, kind of like. Yeah, I was gonna. Like they look shines. like. Yeah, that probably does explain. I was like, they look like organs. They probably are. Like I bet there's a little thing or something in here that just like hits, hits the things, and that's how it makes the timing. I, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Either way, they look cool. Um. All right, sweet. Um. Nice render. Um. Anyone else want to look at their stuff? I thought I saw another hand before. What's your name? Oh, Kai? OK. That I actually just couldn't see. <laughs> oh, no, it's good. Um, I have terrible eyesight, and I, I don't wear my glasses when I look at the computer because it makes my eyes sore. Yeah. I just can't see distance for beans. Like, it's terrible. Um, where am I going right now? Uh, chaos, 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 chaos. Haha. -ha. Gotcha. Um, I mean, better over texture now because now you have even more time to refine or less work to do on the model, and you can work on other stuff. Um, I don't know if there's any confusion about like how much you guys had to had to texture for this week. I know a few people in my other class, I guess, also thought they had to texture the whole thing. Um, so that was like me not explaining something well. My bad. If that say again? No, you were you were not required to do texturing this week, or for for. Texturing was not due today. You did mention was that the was that the like long version stuff at the bottom? Yeah. Um, okay. I think also the Wait. Either way, I was I was not intending to require <laughs> that, so I'm super sorry if I like put something in that assignment and like didn't realize that I put that there. Um UVs. So I said UV it. I don't think I said anything. So there is, so there was something about texturing in the long version of the assignment. Um, I think I mentioned this on the first day of class. That's just like sort of remnants from um, the write up one of the other professors did. Um, I, I leave them in there in case they're helpful. Like the way she words things is like helpful to explain like the thought process behind the assignment. Um, but any of the like actual requirements for things or like things that are due um, is you know pretty much the stuff up here not under long version um, so this one I think did someone emailed me and asked like uh, it said something about like having two weeks to do this assignment but it was both modeling and texturing due um, so yeah I'm, I'm, again my bad I'm sorry if that caused any confusion um, I guess take solace in the fact that you have less to do this week for texturing um, but yeah, that was, that was, yeah, so, yeah. Um, anywho, um, so yeah, if you guys ever see like the long version stuff on the assignments or like any random, just like old PowerPoints and stuff, again, that's stuff that I left in there in case it's helpful for like the way that it's worded or like old PowerPoints <laughs> from old classes. Um, but the curriculum has actually changed since that's been made. Um, and I sort of rejiggered some of the assignment deadlines and stuff, so. Uh, just go by what's on the, the top of the assignment for, for future stuff. Um, anywho. All right. Um, all right. So do you have any specific questions about the globe or just kind of want feedback? Um, I want to think it looks more worn down. Like OK. Gotcha. Um, so let me look at your, 
I'm not gonna lie, globes are one of my least favorite things to texture because I just don't like drawing continents in. It's very annoying to me. Um, all right, so, so see you have some like scratches and stuff here. Nice. Um, Waha. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I was gonna say, this looks like it has way more, uh, way more detail. Um, all right, so is there, what's the most current one you're working off of? Oh, Earth map. I think it's. This is the only other image file I see. So, yeah, cool. Um, actually, does look like a pretty solid one to use for for globe texture. Um, but yeah, so what I would probably do for that is. Um, and is this is this supposed to be low or high poly? It looks like the the renders were low poly. Say again. Okay, cool. Um, so what I would probably do is. Um, you can either go in and Photoshop and just sort of, like if it's, uh, let me see, let me see if I can find reference of old globes. I feel like that would be, that'd be nice. Um, um, but it seems like if they chip, so a lot of at least newer globes are made out of like cardboardy material. Um, so if you chipped off the, the shiny outer coating, it would be like a weird sort of rough papery thing underneath. Um, old globes, I think it makes sense to figure out what it's made out of, because I know, I th like, I think my boyfriend has a really old globe that's made out of, like, metal, um, that also shows Russia as the Soviet Union, but, um, it's a very old globe, but, so first thing, again, sort of decide, like, when it was made and, like, figure out what is actually under that texture, if it's metal or paper, um, and then I'd pretty much just go through and, Maybe you go. You could go on like textures.com and see if you can find any like chipped paper textures or like you know even scratch textures. Again, it kind of depends on like what the uh, what kind of wear you were going for. Um, ooh, that's nice. Um, so this is, I mean, apart from the fact that uh, let me zoom in aggressively, on this. Oh, that's not helpful. All right. Um, I was gonna say, this is kind of a good example, I guess, of at least a paper globe where you can see it's like splitting at the seam. Um, and then to do this, I think I would just basically go in and draw in like where you want the cracks. Um, and then you could use that as a mask if you were just doing this manually in Photoshop. You could use that as a mask for uh, creating the base texture underneath, uh, applying any different kind of roughness map to that. Um, and in this case, since it's like, you can see it's pretty clearly like chipped up and there's maybe a little bit of like pulling around the edges, if that makes sense, where it's like the paper is like peeling up. Um, you could even use that for like a very subtle bump map if you added me and my outer glows, but if you added like a very subtle, like weird outer glow to that. So say perhaps that you had, <laughs> ah, uh, all right, so the, wor the world's legitimate <laughs> ugliest scratch mark ever. Um, I would use this for a map for things, and then if I wanted that little like peely effect at the edge, um, I could go in, uh, and I'm just assuming bump map here, so I'm just gonna grab 50% uh, gray, make that a background, background. Um, and then this, I want to be a little bit reset, so I'm gonna just leave that black, um, but I'm gonna add a little bit of an outer glow to that, just again, I'm sure there's better ways to do this, I just for some reason really like outer glows. Um, but if I just make that white with a lot of opacity and make it like kind of huge, um, this will give you like a very sort of subtle, subtle effect with like the peeling at the edges. Um, for a bump map, I don't know. That's just like usually how I make them. Does that help at all? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, you could also conceivably do it uh, procedurally in Maya. Um, if you're gonna, if you're rendering in Maya, then you could just leave that texture. Um, if not, you could also work on baking that texture out to Unity. It'll basically like save all of your lighting and stuff into the texture map. Um, but yeah, baking is weird. Um, I need to figure out, just for the record, so I'm like absolutely convinced there has to be a way when you're baking textures to bake it so it, if you have a procedural texture, instead of just baking the lighting and like all of the stuff together, it'll just sort of combine in your uh, like different materials for like roughness and color and all that stuff. So you get a bake of multiple different maps you can plug in. Spent a while Googling it, couldn't figure out how. If anyone happens to know a way to do that or stumbles across one, 
let me know. I will love you forever. And then also probably share that with the rest of the class because it seems super useful. Um, but yeah. Um, so any other questions on the globy things? I like. I, I think. Yeah, I do think the texture ended up got on the globe like pretty nicely, and it looks like are these like little metal bands around the edge? Yeah. Yeah. They look cool. I like the, how they like really pick up that little highlight there. Um, it's also nice that you got, you know, it looks like there's a little specular highlight on that globe because mostly they are shiny. So that's cool to see. Um, I have to say, like, watch samplings for later renders. Um, I'm looking into, so um, at, le at least for Arnold 5.1, which I think is a Maya 2019 thing, um, they have some really nice built in um, denoisers. Uh, unfortunately, the lab computers and my personal computer does not have this updated version of Arnold. Uh, so looking into other ways to denoise your images so you don't just need to set the samples up to like 50 and wait 30 minutes to render. Um, so that is a thing that I will figure out and go over in a later week. But anywho, um, cool. So any other questions on the globe or? All right. Uh, does anybody else want to look at their projects? All right. You have until I start closing things to decide otherwise. Hiya. Too much stuff open. Um, all right, last call? All right, cool. Um,